Hey guys, welcome back to the show. So this time we are at Devil's Lake climbing. Uh, so Devil's Lake is a unique place in that it is uh, quartzite um, and there's no bolting allowed. So uh, most people uh, top route or uh, trad climb in the area and there are hundreds and hundreds of climbs um, you know, all across both the uh, East Bluff and the West Bluff. Uh, today, uh, Omar and I spent our time uh, kind of projecting or, or head pointing uh, really a uh, climb called Dippy Diagonal. It's a 5.7. Um, and Devil's Lake is also really known for sandbagging. So, you know, 5.7 is really, really hard uh, compared to a 5.7 in most places. I, I think this probably would have been like a 5.8, 5.8 plus most places definitely uh, so but an amazing you know just splitter hand crack one of the top five sevens in the park um, so we were head pointing it uh, for those of you who don't know what that means it's basically uh, a trad term for practicing uh, a climb you might like top rope it you might you know uh, wrap off and place and figure out gear um, and also pink point so a pink point is when you lead it with pre-placed gear uh, and obviously the final step is to uh, get the red point. So uh, I had led this um, last week, uh, but I was hanging on gear. This week came back, uh, led it again, um, and had to hang on gear in a couple of places. But then uh, I pulled the rope and pink pointed it successfully without hanging. So step in the right direction. Next thing is to get the send. Um, other than that, uh, Devil's Lake is really a beautiful place. The guidebook is called Devil's Lake, A Climbing Guide. It's by Jay Knower and also includes uh, Nasita and Hillbilly Hollow. So if you're in Wisconsin climbing, uh, you know, it's a great guidebook to have for all three of those, those places. Um, coming out here, parking, uh, you'll need a parking pass. That's kind of important. The annual pass is $38, is that what I said? $38, $38 for out of state, $28 for in state. Um, and day passes, I think, are $16 out of state, and I want to say $13 in state. But I'll put a link um, to the uh, to the DNR, uh, Wisconsin DNR uh, website that'll have all the information. I'll put that in the, uh, the video description. Um, so yeah, what'd you think about, you've been out here once before to top row? Yeah, and first time fun. leading? Yeah, first time leading, treading. Ugh, it's fun. Um, difficult, especially if you haven't climbed in a few months. You gotta really be mentally prepared for it if you're gonna do it and physically ready for it. Yeah. Especially because you're right, it's sandbagged. It depends on the route you choose. Some routes could be easy, some routes could be hard. Yeah, I think the key there is to just start off slow, build your build your way up. Uh, the book is really good for telling you uh, not much about the protection, but will tell you uh, the grade and uh, like a PG or R rating. So it's really good for that because uh, a lot of the routes out here, uh, some of them have never been uh, led, I think. Um, so in the guidebook, you'll actually see uh, first top rope ascent. Uh, mentioned as well as like first lead ascents mentioned so a lot of history uh, a lot of great climbing really recommend checking it out there's a lot of cool uh, routes out here uh, we'll definitely be coming back uh, doing some more climbing um, so with that said i uh, got a beer review for you so this is McPoyle Milk Stout uh, by Mild Wide beer company uh, out of Louisville, Kentucky. Um, it is a six and a half uh, ABV, so obviously stout and milk stout. Made with lactose, don't forget that uh, if you are lactose intolerant. We've had some uh, milk stouts on the show before. So let's see. There's a cool yeah. cow design on this, I like it. And it's feeding the cow with a bottle of milk. It's really cool. Mm, it's good, you know. Uh, so a little bit of bitter caramel. You got that sweetness from the lactose. 
Actually really smooth, really good beer. I like it. Yeah. If you're in Louisville, check it out. Mild Wide Beer Company, uh, the McPoyle Milk Stout, um, and check out the uh, Dippy Diagonal. Dippy Diagonal is a five, seven, four star hand crack. It's located on the lower tier of the major mass. It's about 35 feet high with a slight five to 10 degree overhang at the very top. At the start of the climb, you wanna step up on the first block and you wanna place a large cam like a number 8 master cam or a number 3 C4 or even a hex depending on your rack. You just place that about mid crack before hand jamming and stepping over to engage the rest of the crack. Once you've stepped up, you're going to want to place a number 5 master cam or equivalent. Once you've had a little bit of a rest and you're ready to take on the climb, you're going to start hand jamming and foot jamming. And as soon as you get above that master pan, or black diamond pan, you can place an equivalent there. You're going to be moving into the cross. So you're going to want to get yourself ready to move fast. Get that first hand jam, get a nice foot jam, start moving up. Now your next piece is going to be a number 3 C4. You're probably going to want to rack that on the left side of your harness. Because as you get up, you're going to get a really nice right hand jam that allows you to place that can. As you can see here, I'm struggling a little with my feet. So focusing on your footwork during this crux section is going to be really key so you can move quickly and stay in the crack. Once you get up here, you've got solid feet. And the next piece you're going to place is a number six master pan or equivalent maybe a number one black diamond can would be about the equivalent here. At this point there are a few ledges out on the left face that you can use for footing. You gotta get up one more and there's a really good jug for your left hand to grab a hold of. From there is where you're going to place your last piece. So for me, that was a number four Natolius Master Can. Again, the key is to keep moving, not pump out, because at this point you're starting to feel that slight overhang. Although the climbing is easier, you just finished the crux, it's getting a little overhung. So now it's just a jug haul all the way to the top, just run out this last 10 feet get to the top and finish off the climb. Once you do get to the top, you have a couple of options. If you're going to be projecting the climb, you've got this tree that you could build an anchor on, the top rope, or on back, there's a, a continuing crack which you could build an anchor if you want to maybe put together a multi-pitch route with this being the first pitch. Either way, this is an amazing climb, not to be missed.